Welcome to Small Dog Prints and thank you for your purchase. We're excited for you to begin making your own custom screen stencils and for you to begin screen printing. Each purchase includes a small black baggie of test strips, which are simply miniature versions of our regular sized film. Test strips are included so that artists can test a wide variety of exposure methods before making a full size screen. Although test strips are small, they can be used under a section of any size printed transparency. Like all Small Dog Prints film, test strips are formulated to expose perfectly every time with our Small Dog Prints light kit. Even so, Small Dog Prints film can expose using a myriad of light options. This video will provide a quick review on when and how to use our test strips. Some reasons to use test strips are, first, if you already own an alternative light kit. When testing an alternative light kit, start with the directions that we give for using the Small Dog Prints light kit and place the tip of the bulb or unit 12 inches away from your work surface. Adjust your time and or distance up or down accordingly. If you are not happy with your results, consider purchasing a Small Dog Prints inexpensive DIY light kit. Artists who already own professional light tables or units will want to experiment with test strips first. Please note, Professional light tables with daylight fluorescent tubes that mimic the rays of the sun are used for, and are used for growing plants indoors will work. Please refer to our Frequently Asked Questions page for specific light box recommendations, Kelvin and Lumen requirements. For light tables, start with tubes that sit four inches away from your work surface and expose for three minutes. Adjust your time and or distance up or down accordingly. You do machines will require a three to four minute exposure time. Test strips can also be helpful if you live in a sunny area and would like to expose film using the sun. Please note, using the sun to expose screens can be a bit tricky due to the time of year, time of day, and how much cloud coverage there is. To increase your odds of success, choose a sunny day with few to no clouds and expose between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Start with a five second exposure time and adjust up or down accordingly. Test strips can also be helpful if you'd like to determine whether or not your desired level of detail will be achieved with a particular design. Make sure that the design printed on your transparency has lines that are greater than 0.7 millimeters thick. If drawing your design, always be sure to use a black paint marker as Sharpies will not be dark enough. When printing your design with an inkjet or laser printer, always make sure that the darkest black ink and best quality ink possible is selected on your inkjet or laser printer. The first step in using test strips is to make an exposure board sandwich. Separate the test strips. Place one test strip on the black board with the dark orange side facing up, which is always packaged that way inside the baggie. Flip over your printed transparency so that the textured side of the transparency is facing down and is sitting on top of the dark orange side of the film. Cover with your clear plexi sheet. Note, the test strip should be placed under the printed part of the design with the most detail. Step number two, expose film and your printed design to your light source of choice. Step number three, after exposure, separate the test strip from the printed transparency. Make sure to keep the transparency dry as you will need that to make the next screen. Put the test strip in lukewarm water and soak for 10 minutes you should immediately see a ghost image appear. Step number four, develop your screen. Small Dog Prints film is capable of producing screens with incredibly high levels of detail. To achieve the highest level of detail possible, Small Dog Prints best practice 
is to develop screens with our white plastic mesh sheet sitting on top of the black flexible plastic board that come in your kit. Use a sink with a spray nozzle and spray the film's dark orange side. Most often, no sponging or brushing will be necessary to develop your screen as the sprayer will simply do the work for you. Here's what's happening. The white mesh plastic sheet slightly elevates the film while the sprayer gently washes unwanted emulsion away through the tiny hole openings. The black plastic board behind the film gives the added support that the film needs during developing. If you find emulsion has not washed out from some areas with tiny detail, flip your film over and softly brush with the brush included in your kit. If the emulsion still has not rinsed away, flip your screen over and softly brush on the dark orange side of the film as well. Care should be taken when doing this as it's easy to accidentally wash away emulsion in your screen that creates tiny details. One key to developing is knowing when to stop Developing can happen very quickly, and one must resist the temptation to overspray and or overscrub. Step number five, dry your screen by blotting excess moisture from it by using a paper towel. Place it dark orange side facing up under the light to dry. Reposition often so it doesn't dry to your work surface. Step number six, it's time to try printing with your new screen. When your screen is dry and feels like a piece of paper, practice printing with it. Check your print to make sure that the desired level of detail has been achieved. Here's a quick guide for troubleshooting. If too much emulsion has washed out, then your film has been undercooked. Either increase the amount of your exposure time and or decrease the distance your bulb sits from your work surface. Alternatively, if not enough emulsion has washed out, then your film has been overcooked. Either decrease the amount of exposure time and or increase the distance your bulb sits from your work surface. We hope this guide has helped and as always, happy screen printing!